Jesus. That's my mother-in-law's eye. It's the same as happened to Dr. Makeley. The decimate detached, ripped, and enrolled at the moment that I inserted an intraocular lens through a clear corneal incision. But my mother-in-law, in some detachment, it had been like that for a month with a central bolus keratopathy. Dr. Merrick uh, presented a similar case in 91 and he had a good result with penetrating keratoplasty. But a corneal transplantation in my mother-in-law, now it's impossible, I can't handle it. I have to try something else. Dr. Sparks in 67 had the idea of reattaching the membrane with air. In that same year, Dr. Sugar proposed suture. In 86, Dr. Dunzes used a sodium hyaluronate. In 87, Dr. Sussman tried a slowly absorbed gas, the sulfur hexafluoride. I have to try one of these methods on my mother-in-law before a corneal transplantation to see if it is possible to stick her decimate to the stroma. To stick? Well, I've been using Tissel in my clear corneal incisions to avoid post-operative leaking since 92. Dr. Bushman has already used this glue intraocularly to seal crystalline lens perforation is in 82. But since this is my mother-in-law, I ought to try the first organic glue, the cemetopexy, in an animal less rational. I'll tell you what, I'll get a couple of rabbits to do the same detachment as my mother-in-law had, and then I'll try the various types of disemetopexy. It wasn't easy to repeat the detachment. I had to operate in 30 rabbit eyes to get 10 similar detachments as my mother-in-law's. As the experiment will be done with the five types of disemetopexy, I can test each method in two eyes. After I learned it, it wasn't that hard to cause the detachment. After emptying the anterior chamber completely, it is surprisingly easy to unroll the scroll using a spatula over the cornea, and this is really non-traumatic. Very well. Now let's go to the disemetopexies. In the first two eyes, we will try the Sparks disemetopexy only with air. And let's have a look at the two rabbit eyes on which I did that. One day, one week, and a month after. Now let's see what happens to the Zussman gas disemetopexy. And here we have the two rabbit eyes. One day after, one week after, and a month after. In order to perform the sugars disemetopexy, I haven't had too much trouble. To transfix a suture through the cornea, it is not as hard as I thought it would be if the anterior chamber is filled with either air or viscoelastic. Let's see what happened. One day, one week, and a month after the two decimetopexies have been done. Now it is time for the decimetopexy with viscoat. It is really easy to reattach the decime if the anterior chamber is empty and the viscoelastic really holds it in place. Here's what happened. One day, one week, and a month after the two dances, uh, disemetopexies. In the glue disemetopexy, the glue should be applied between the air placed in the anterior chamber and the endothelium. This should be easy to do using my microdoser system, which releases the glue drop by drop. To cover all the detachment area, I had to do the application in two different times in I1. As the glue penetrates, it is pushed against the endothelium by the air. The coagulation occurs in seconds.
I had to wait a few seconds to do the second application so that the first amount of glue injected would adhere firmly to the endothelium. It is great to see how the glue spreads slowly between the air and the endothelium without reaching the angle and keeping a distance from the iris and lens. In the second eye, with the paracentesis in a better position, I was able to cover up the whole detached area all at once. In the first post-operative day, it was possible to see the glue stuck to the endothelium through the transparent cornea in both eyes. A week later, the glue in eye 1 had already been completely absorbed. In eye 2, there was still a certain amount of glue stuck to the endothelium. A month after, both corneas had been totally clear and the decimate membrane perfectly reattached. The glue had been completely reabsorbed without a trace of inflammatory reaction. In all 10 eyes that were tested, there was no intraocular pressure increase in the post-operative. When comparing the five types of dysometopexis, there was no doubt that the one that had better results was definitely the organic glue. With the air, the decimate didn't reattach in either of the eyes. The gas reattached the main brain in eye two. However, there was a certain degree of endothelium deficit which could represent a toxic effect. The suture worked perfectly well in I2. So did the viscoat. But the glue provided a complete reattachment in both eyes. In I2, the gap left by the decime was covered by a whitish tissue, which might have been a deposition of fibrin. I guess now I can use the organic glue in a more rational animal, in my mother-in-law. Well, not that rational. First of all, let's put the air. My major concern in my mother-in-law would be to avoid that the glue would take up more than three-fourths of the anterior chamber angle, because this would cause inocular hypertension and she could be in terrible pain. Not that she doesn't deserve that. Look what happened. The spreading of the glue wasn't so good as that in the rabbits, but it covered the whole area where the detachment started. I think it's gonna work. Get a load of that. Isn't that great? A month after the decime is completely reattached and the cornea is totally transparent. My mother-in-law is cured. And just like the rabbits, there was no intraocular reaction as the glue was being absorbed. Just look at the difference in the cornea transparency before and after the glue dissimetopexy.